The water revealed the ruins of a 3,400-year-old city. Low water levels in a reservoir in Mosul have exposed the ruins of a 3,400-year-old city. Scientists believe that the vast complex with a palace and several large buildings may be the remains of the city of Zakiku, which was an important center of the Mitanni Empire. The ruins were flooded during the construction of the Mosul Dam in the 1980s before being thoroughly explored. So the reappearance of the city's remains gave archaeologists a rare opportunity to excavate. Iraq is one of the countries most affected by climate change. The south of the country in particular has been suffering from extreme drought for months. To prevent crops from drying out, large amounts of water were taken from the reservoir in Mosul, Iraq's most important water storage, from December. This led to the rediscovery of a Bronze Age city that had been submerged decades ago without previous archaeological exploration. It is located in Kamune in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. This unforeseen event has put archaeologists under sudden pressure to excavate as soon as possible and document at least part of this large and important city before it is submerged again. Kurdish archaeologist Dr. Hassan Ahmed Qasim, chairman of the Kurdistan Archaeology Organization, and German archaeologists Professor Ivan Pulgis, University of Freiburg, and Professor Peter Falsner, University of Tübingen, spontaneously decided to undertake joint research at Kamune. They took place in January and February this year. The research team was completed in a few days. Funding for the work was quickly obtained from the Fritz Thyssen Foundation through the University of Freiburg. The German-Kurdish team of archaeologists worked under extreme time pressure as it was not known when the water in the reservoir would rise again. In a short time, the researchers managed to reproduce the city to a large extent. In addition to the palace, which has already been documented during a short survey in 2018. Several other large buildings have been discovered, massive fortifications with a wall and towers, a monumental multi-story warehouse building and an industrial complex. The extensive urban complex dates back to the Mitanni Empire, circa 1550 to 1350 BC which controlled large areas of northern Mesopotamia and Syria. The huge warehouse building is of particular importance because huge quantities of goods, probably imported from all over the region, must have been stored there, says Ivana Pulgis. Hassan Kassim, in turn, emphasizes that, this place was an important center in the Mitanni Empire. The research team was surprised by the well-preserved condition of the walls, sometimes up to several meters high. It is so unusual that the walls were made of sun-dried mud bricks and were underwater for over 40 years. Probably the good state of preservation of the city is due to the fact that it was destroyed in an earthquake around 1350 BC. During it, the collapsing upper parts of the walls buried the buildings, which helped to preserve them. Of particular interest is the discovery of five ceramic vessels that contained an archive of more than 100 cuneiform tablets. They date from the Middle Assyrian period, shortly after an earthquake hit the city. Some clay tablets may be letters, they are even still in their clay envelopes. Researchers hope that this discovery will provide important information about the end of the city in the Mitanni period and the beginning of Assyrian rule in the region. It's almost a miracle that cuneiform tablets made of unbaked clay have survived so many decades underwater, says Peter Falsner, to prevent rising water from further damaging this important site. The excavated buildings were completely covered with plastic sheeting and gravel as part of an extensive conservation project funded by the Gerda Henkel Foundation. This is
is to protect the unbaked clay walls and any other artifacts still hidden in the ruins. Currently, the area is completely flooded again. Men lose their Y chromosomes as they age. This affects their lifespan. Statistically, men live a little shorter than women. As it turns out, this is partly influenced by factors that are difficult for men to do something about and which are even difficult to measure. They are related to the basic differences between men and women and the level of chromosomes. Men lose more than just their hair as they age. They also start to lose Y chromosomes from their cells. Scientists have previously linked it to a long list of diseases and a higher risk of death, but the evidence has been circumstantial. Now they report that when they removed the Y chromosome from male mice, the animals died earlier than their Y chromosome counterparts, possibly because their hearts became less efficient. But unfortunately the possibilities of using it are limited to the laboratory. It is hoped, however, that with the right level of interest and need, these tests would become more readily available. But how could the effects of the loss of this chromosome be mitigated? Current methods of treating idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis give some hope here. One of the drugs used is perfenidone which has already been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. In addition, research is also being carried out on the possibility of using it in the treatment of heart failure and chronic kidney failure. Dr. Kenneth Walsh of the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine at the University of Virginia believes that patients with a loss of the Y chromosome could respond well to a treatment that could improve their health and increase their life expectancy. Puzzling temperature changes on Neptune. Nearly two decades of observations have shown that Neptune experiences surprising changes in temperature. The analysis of the collected data revealed that, despite the arrival of summer in the southern hemisphere, the temperature dropped by 8 degrees Celsius, 
then jumped sharply by 11 degrees Celsius. Scientists cannot fully explain this mystery. On the most distant planet of the solar system, just like on Earth, there are seasons. However, due to the fact that a year on Neptune is about 165 Earth years, the season there lasts about 40 years. It has been summer on Neptune since 2005. Scientists at the University of Leicester in the UK and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory decided that this was a good opportunity to see how temperatures change on Neptune. To do this, they analyzed nearly 100 infrared images of the gas giant collected over the past 17 years of observations. The data showed that between 2003 and 2018, as the planet's southern hemisphere slowly entered summer, Neptune's global temperature dropped by 8 degrees Celsius, but then, by 2020, temperatures at the South Pole jumped by as much as 11 degrees Celsius. Scientists they don't know where these temperature fluctuations come from. The description of the observations was published in the Planetary Science Journal. Neptune is the farthest, eighth planet in our solar system. It is 17 times more massive than Earth and slightly larger than its twin Uranus. It is the fourth in diameter and third in mass planet of the solar system. The gas giant has 14 known moons, the largest of which is Triton, which, unlike planets and most moons in our solar system, is retrograde, indicating that it was once an asteroid, possibly in the Kuiper belt, but was pulled into orbit Neptune by gravitational interactions. Recent surveys of the solar system's most distant planet have discovered something unexpected. A team of scientists has combined all existing Neptune thermal camera images, which measure the infrared radiation emitted by astronomical objects, taken over the last 17 years by observatories around the world, the European Southern Observatory's very large telescope, the Gemini South Telescope in Chile, the Subaru Telescope, Keck Telescope and Gemini North Telescope, as well as images from NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope. By analyzing the data, the scientists were able to show the most accurate picture yet of trends in Neptune's temperatures. However, to their surprise, these cumulative data showed a surprising drop in temperatures when they should have been rising. The researchers noted in the paper that reliable thermal imaging of Neptune began in 2003 and shows globally averaged temperatures in the gas giant's stratosphere. Since then, between 2003 and 2018, global stratospheric temperatures have dropped by around 8 degrees Celsius. But then, between 2018 and 2020,